Hello, my quilting friends. I'm Leah Day, a professional quilter, author, and online teacher. And this podcast is all about quilting, running a creative business, and balancing our busy hands with our busy lives. You can find the episode show notes and links to everything mentioned in this podcast at leahday.com. Enjoy the show. Hello, my quilting friends. Leah Day here with episode 20 of the podcast. And today I'm chatting with Stephanie Kendron, the host of the Modern Society podcast. So you can check out her website at modernsociety.com. Now, I met Stephanie at Quilt Market last fall, and we hit it off talking about podcasts and quilting and business, and she really helped explain how to get started, and I have her to thank for getting my podcast, uh, you know, kind of out of the, I want to do that, I'm thinking about it a lot stage, and into reality. Uh, so we're going to be talking a lot about podcasting and how she runs her quilting business, so be looking forward to that. Now for a quilting update. I've been making a lot of great progress on many projects, but the one I'm most excited and happy about is the Mega Penwheel Star Quilt. Last month I shared this as a new free quilt pattern, and you can find that at leahday.com slash megastar. And I created it using the fabrics in the April Quilty Box. So I do this every month. I get the Quilty Box and pull it out and design a quilt pattern in like one or two days and put it up uh, on a Monday. It usually comes out on the third or fourth Monday of the month. So that quilt, usually it's just a top that I get done and I usually just fold it up and put it away. And like, okay, I'll do something with this. I'll teach some quilting with this or something on another day. But this time I was folding it up and dad was like, why don't we finish it? You know, instead of putting away and having another unfinished project laying around, why don't we finish it? Um, so I took a look at all the projects we had in progress. We've got some stuff for deadlines and some stuff that's just kind of, you know, a steady, steady progression and stuff. And I was like, I don't think I have time, dad, you know? Um, and we went back and forth and sat down and he was just really encouraging and patient and willing to listen as I, you know, broke down what else was going on and then how much, how much work it would be to create a whole lot of videos off of this quilt, you know, to make a whole workshop with it. And so we kept breaking it down and more than anything else, keeping it simple. And uh, we ended up creating basically the outline for a new quilting workshop. And it's going to be featuring the Mega Pinwheel Star. And I've already started filming this. So I'm, I'm filming a new quilting workshop and quilting the Mega Pinwheel Star. And we decided on a very simple quilting design using walking foot quilting. I've been getting a lot of requests for more videos on walking foot quilting and more information about it. And I've been wanting an excuse to dig into it, but kind of not giving into that desire. I don't know why, but I, you know, I do that sometimes. It's like, oh, I really want to dig into that, but I don't have time. So I'll do that one other day, you know, something like that. So we are going to turn this into a new quilting workshop. And uh, we went through and looked at designs and planned out what we wanted to teach and share with it. And I decided to really dig into walking foot quilting. And this has been something I've been wanting to do for months, you know, really play with walking foot quilting in a very, very simple way and to quilt very quickly with it, which walking foot quilting and quick are usually not used in the same sentence. <laughs> walking foot quilting can be fairly slow, uh, but I'm learning how to do this more quickly and it all comes into how you place the design on the quilt and the scale, the distance between the lines of quilting. Uh, and so it's been a challenge for me to uh, make this fast and quick and simple and then also um, to not overcomplicate it. That's that's a tendency for me. I I tend to look at something and go, oh, well, it's good with eight videos. Let's let's it'll be even better if there's 16. You know, <laughs> I just I make it too much and then I get bogged down with it and things slow down and then other projects, you know, take precedence and that's why nothing gets done. And so Keeping it simple is a challenge, but it also feels great because I really feel like I'm being effective and I can see this project's endpoint, you know, and Josh has set some deadlines for me that have been really helpful. 
And I have to say, I'm really excited about finishing the quilt too. I have used minky fabric on the back, so it's going to quilt up super soft. It's going to finish super soft. And it's honestly, it's the squishiest quilt I've ever made because I put Hobbs heirloom wool batting in the middle too. So uh, it really is a texture wonderland and I cannot wait to finish it up and be able to enjoy it on the couch. James and I are always fighting over the softest blanket and now this quilt will be the softest blanket on the couch and that'll be really sweet. So you can be looking forward to that new workshop coming out sometime in June and I'm looking forward to working like this, you know, faster, simpler, and then really tapping into what I want to teach. And I'm really thinking that walking foot quilting is such a great thing to teach. You know, it's, it's a, an easier form of quilting. It is easier to get into. Um, it's not such a hard, long slog of practicing that you have to go through in order to master free motion quilting. So I think it's a great technique and it's something that I really have been wanting to play with a lot more and now I'm going to do it. So working on this has actually also kind of kicked me into working on my book and I've been working on this walking foot book for months. And so I finally went back to it and took a look at it and I decided I did want to do a little bit of expanding on the walking foot book and add more designs to it. So I'm going to do that and then use the book as the basis for the machine quilting block party next year. So next year will be all about simple, easy quilting designs with your walking foot. And I think that's a wonderful direction to be moving in. I'm really excited about that. So feeling great about these two projects and making progress on both of them this month. Uh, now, one other thing I've changed and it's on the blog is I've gone back to sharing new free motion quilting designs every Friday. And this is using my home machine, the Bernina 1230. Uh, and I quilt out a design in a four inch square. And so you're able to see the texture on a small scale being quilted. This is the way I've shared design videos since 2009. But I kind of, I, lately for the last couple of years, I've kind of been like, oh, I'll throw up a design video maybe like once a month. And now I want to go back to it being a regular thing. So if you're looking for new designs, maybe something funky and interesting to quilt over the weekend, you can get a quilting fix every Friday on the Free Motion Quilting Project. And another thing that's kind of a weekly feature is every Sunday, I'm sharing a sit down quilting Sunday video. Now this is quilting on a set down long arm, my Grace Cunique 14 plus, and we just hit 15 videos this week. So if you've been thinking about a set down long arm and you're curious about it and you want to know how it works and uh, if that can make a difference to your quilting, video, your quilting ability and uh, how you manage bigger quilts, then definitely come and check these videos out. I really love the Grace Cunique. It's a great machine. Uh, we've been working together really well for several months now, and I've been starting to use this machine on some of my, um, I guess, more special quilts like the Dream Goddess. So definitely come and check it out and learn more about that. You can find all of those videos, the design videos uh, for Free Motion Quilting and the Set Down Sunday videos at freemotionproject.com. So that's it for my personal quilting update. Our sponsor for the show this week is the Machine Quilting Block Party, where you can learn how to piece and machine quilt a block every single month. You can check it out at leahday.com slash block party. You'll learn so much about quilt piecing and free motion quilting and ruler foot quilting. We have a little bit of everything in these videos, so I think you'll learn a lot. So come check it out at leahday.com slash block party. And now here's the show. Hello, my quilting friends. Leah Day here, and I am joined with Stephanie Kendron. She is the podcaster behind the Modern Society podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, how are you, Leah? I'm doing great. So we're going to talk about podcasting and sewing and quilting and all that good stuff. So why don't you just share kind of the, the starting story? Like, how did you get into sewing and quilting? Well, 
sewing and quilting was, I, I remember growing up and my mom and my grandma always sewed and created. My mom used to make me the coolest dresses that she saved not one of. And now I have two girls who I would love to see in some of those outfits, but no, she did, she's not a saver. Um, so I grew up with that and then I kind of dabbled here and there in trying to um, sew and quilt and things like that. But when my oldest daughter was born in 2007, and my husband, um, back in the days when the economy was awesome, got a bonus and he said, hey, you know, here's some money. Go buy something that you really just wouldn't buy for yourself. And I thought, oh, okay, I really want to buy a sewing machine. So I got just a finger sewing machine that was kind of basic. It was a little bit elevated from a basic. And that is when blogs kind of started happening. And I would just think, okay, I want to make um, – a dress for the baby and I would just search tutorials and the blogs that I read and try and find things that I could do and there were a lot of failures a lot of failures and then I started to kind of get the hang of it and have more successes and um, got some mentors in my life that would come over and help me and that was kind of the start of my addiction to sewing that hasn't stopped since 2007. <laughs> Excellent. And then at what point did you want to start a podcast? Like where did that, where did that desire come from? Well, we, um, had been trying to buy a house that was kind of almost our dream house. We put in a, several offers when the, gosh, when my oldest was a baby, I remember her being in the car seat and we toured the house and we put in this crazy offer that we probably never should have. And it got rejected. And we, Throughout the next year or two, we put in, I think, two or three more offers that were still out of our price range, but we really knew that we wanted a house. And so, you know, fast forward, it goes on foreclosure, and we know the neighbors, and they called us right away. We put in an offer, and we got it for like $100,000 less than we had initially tried to get it. And it was crazy, like, yay, but now we have this house. It needed a lot of work, so we had two weeks, we gutted it, and we moved in, and I had this house, like my dream house, and projects that I was working on, and my husband, when we had those two weeks of remodeling, would listen to podcasts, you know, while he was doing something, he would wear his headphones and, you know, really kind of be off on his own, and he said, you know, you should really think about trying to find a sewing podcast, and I thought, okay, so I did, and then he said, why don't you start your own? And I said, um, okay, all right, I'll do that. And I remember it was probably the first couple of months that we were in this house. I pushed record and Katie from Katie's Sculpting Corner helped me tremendously. She helped me to get all of the back end stuff figured out. I would email her, I would text her, I would call her and she would always help me. And so I found it was ready to push record and, I just haven't looked back. It was a way for me to tell stories. And as a Southern girl, I grew up on my grandma's porch listening to everyone's stories. So I feel like this is almost like having a friend sit on the porch and have sweet tea and shell some peas and talk about sewing. I mean, that's how I view my podcast. Absolutely. I mean, I titled mine because I just wanted to make more quilting friends. <laughs> You know, so I completely agree with you. I mean, it's just a, it's a chat between friends, even if, you know, we might not have ever met in person. But, you know, I, I love that. I think that's that's exactly the reason why I started mine, too. And um, so you mentioned, uh, uh, sorry, uh, what was her name? Uh, the other podcast that was inspiring to you? Katie's Quilting Corner. Katie's Quilting Corner. Were there any other quilting or sewing podcasts that you were listening to at that time? Gosh, I'm trying to think. Um, I listened to hers, and I'm pretty sure Pat Solms was in the mix. And, um, I mean, you know, then the normal ones that aren't sewing-related, like This American Life and The Moth, and those were always in the mix. And, and you know, since then, I've kind of went eclectic, and I have all kinds of things in the mix. But um, I don't listen to that many other sewing podcasts these days because I feel like I have a really bad habit of, 
comparing myself. <laughs> and I don't think it's a healthy thing for me. And I noticed that after, you know, probably like the first 10 episodes, I would listen to sewing podcasts and go, I should have done that. Or I could have talked about that. Or maybe I should have that little jingle in my podcast. And I thought, this is not healthy. So I... Um, I don't really listen to a lot of sewing ones anymore just for my own sake of sanity, if that makes any sense. I don't know if you're the same way, but yeah. I just kind of know that. I figured that out. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I listen to a few sewing, like, I, I love yours, and whenever I, uh, that pops up, I, I like to listen to yours, because it always seems to be, you know, really topical about what's going on in the sewing and quilting world, and I like to stay kind of up to date, um, but yeah, I, I enjoy listening to more business podcasts, and like, there's my favorite writing podcast, it's about self-publishing, is um, The Creative Pen, uh, so, you know, I think it's so interesting, um, you know, what we listen to, and especially, you know, while we're sewing, I've listened to audiobooks for years. Oh, yeah. And it's only now, really, like, audiobooks are just now starting to get super, super popular mainstream, and I've listened to them since I was a little girl. I love to be read to, so I think podcasts are even better, because it's almost like, you know, a chat between, you know, two people that had the same interests, you know, and that's awesome. So um, yeah. describe a little bit, you know, the back end of making a podcast. This might be something that a lot of people don't know anything about. And it's tough. I mean, it was it yeah. was really um, a lot of work when I got into it. And you helped me so much just understanding, just getting it off the ground at the very, very first days. Uh, so that was super, super helpful uh, when we talked at Quilt Market. So can you just talk people through your process and how you make your podcast? Yeah, I, so the back end technical part of it is I went to, um, Pat that does Smart Passive Income. He has like a tutorial of how to like get a podcast started. So I, they're videos, I'm pretty sure. So I would push play and if he said to do something, I would go and do that and push pause and then come back and push play. And a lot of it is you have to set up an RSS feed and you, I, I have WordPress for my website and I record on Skype. So there's, I have a Mac and there's a, a program called call recorder for Skype on Mac. So I will call the person and record that conversation um, through Skype on the call recorder. So that goes into a file on my computer. And then I pull, I used to pull that file and put it into audacity, which is like an editing software. And I would do, I would record my intro, my outro and stick that recorded call in the middle. And that worked really well for a long time, but I did not enjoy that part. And I'm not going to take out all the coughs and the the things like that, that's just not time that I wanted to do. So I had a sweet, sweet listener, Julie. Hey, Julie. And she said, hey, my my husband is an audio engineer, and he wants to get back into that. And um, he's a Southern guy. You'll love him. And I said, okay, are you sure Kevin's up for this? And she said, yes. Yeah. So now what I do is I take that audacity part kind of out of it, and I send all of my content to Kevin and Kevin totally takes all of the crazy noises out and anything that I ask him to take out makes the audio sound a lot better. And then he sends a file back to me. So once I get that file, I download it and put it into iTunes and I'll label everything. And then I take it out of iTunes and I put it on Libsyn, which is a server that holds your podcast and puts it on that RSS feed that you established so then they give you a link and that link then goes into WordPress and you make a, you know, that's where you go into WordPress and have your artwork and you do your links um, for anything that you talked about, your show notes. And you put that link that you got for the podcast from Libsyn into that and it automatically, when you push publish, sends that to iTunes and sends that to a blog post where people can actually listen from either the blog post or from iTunes or Stitcher, whatever they listen on. Um, so that is the process. I think the hard thing about that process is podcasting is kind of new and trying to get the statistics of who pushed play on your website, who pushed play on iTunes, who pushed play on Stitcher. That data 
it's very muddled and I haven't really learned how to how to really decipher what it's saying. And I talked to Abby Glassenberg, um, who also has a podcast while she naps. And that is a big thing for her as well. It's, it is, they give you data, but it's kind of hard to say what that data says and, and who it's coming from. I hope that that changes in the future, but, um, that's kind of the back end of what I deal with. And, in the back end of how I do it, which sounds like a lot of steps, and it kind of is. I mean, I wish it was more streamlined, but it's not. I mean, it's a lot of steps. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I maybe this will help you. I use Buzzsprout, and I just upload the episode to Buzzsprout. It's Buzzsprout.com, and uh, it does all of that for me. Like, uh, I don't have to go to iTunes. I don't, uh, and I think it also can upload to Stitcher as well. And I don't use Stitcher, but it it will automatically update to iTunes and Google Play uh, and and those two systems. And so, like, you can, like, join, like, link up accounts. And so all you have to do is upload once, and then you get an embed file. So then you can take that little embed like code snippet and then go copy and paste it wherever you want it to go. And you can do a right. single player where it'll play one episode or you can do a player that will play all of your episodes so people can binge listen, <laughs> which is yeah. our goal. Uh, and it gives you a little bit better stats, but I mean, like, I don't know who's clicking on an embedded player versus going yeah. to the Buzzsprout page verse and also like yeah. gives you a little website that you, you know, will also have all of the, um, the podcast episodes too. So, you know, I, I think, yeah, data is a little tricky on podcasts as far as how many people are listening, how many people are subscribing. It kind of gives me an overall number, but not anything that you can really dial down onto. And I think there's other systems like that, like pod, uh, pod sprout or something. There's lots of different ones you can Google. I just wanted, I want as like, when I was looking for that kind of thing, I was like, give me a one-stop shop where I can upload and be done with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think with um, Lipson, you can do other things. I am one of those things that whatever I learn first is really hard for me to not do. Um, and so that's how Pat did it. And I think that that was probably an old way that he did it. I'm pretty sure that he doesn't do that now. Actually, I think he has his own app for podcasts now. But um I, Kevin, um, is starting his own website to do things like this. And I think that those are one of the things that we're going to work on, which I'm really excited because I think that he's going to help me to learn how to do podcasting better. But I also think that it's going to help him and his business learn how a creative needs to streamline and not do like put it in the iTunes and then put it there. I think that he is going to be able to have a service for other people in the creative industry to be able to do this painlessly. Whereas, I mean, not that it's painful when I do it, but it does take a lot of time. And I I hope that we can come up with a strategy and a system. So when somebody hires him to, you know, edit their podcast and do their audio, that it will actually be from all of my knowledge of what I don't want to do anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. (laughs) Yeah. Completely. There's so much of the back end where it's like, Oh, do I have to do that? Like, you know, please just take that editing job away from me. I don't want to have to do it anymore. I completely understand. And you know, it's one of those things that, um, I, you know, I've been making videos for years, but I did not realize that a podcast could be so much work And it's mostly because it's such long form content. Like, you know, it's one thing to make a five minute video. It's five minutes, but an hour, hour and a half long podcast is an hour and a half length of listen. Like you have to listen to the whole thing multiple times sometimes to make sure you got it all right. You know? Uh, And then it always drives me crazy. And it's like, oh my gosh, I completely missed that coughing fit, you know, in the middle. (laughs) And it's in it there. It's gotten published, you know, into the middle of the podcast. I, guess did it a little bit different where my personality is super laid back like you know you come over to my house and I might have laundry that I haven't folded yet I'd love to do laundry so it's I mean that's rare for me but if it happens or you know the beds aren't made or the kids have left their science project out and they're at school whatever that is I'm like this is me And I mean, I hope that you are my friend because you like being around me and 
and I kind of view my podcast the same way that if there are things in there and that aren't perfect, that's who I am. And, you know, I feel like in some ways that makes it a little bit more real for me and it takes a lot of the pressure off of me. Maybe I just don't want the pressure and I take it off myself, but, um, I don't know. I'm a little bit more laid back than I know a lot of other podcasters are. I don't know if that's a good thing, though. I'm not saying if you want to start your own podcast to be like me, but that's who I am. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And, you know, sometimes just, like, kind of taking it down a notch. Like, dude, it does not have to be perfect. I'm the same way. Like, totally not perfect. If you saw my house, like... I'm a quilter, not a dishwasher, (laughs) you know, Uh, I do not mop my floors, sorry, not gonna happen, you know, Uh, and you know, it's, it's just, it all hangs out, you know, I have quilts on the wall, they're pretty, but just don't look in the corners, there's lots of dust there, you know, (laughs) Uh, so tell me about that, that. Uh, yeah, so tell me about the episodes, like, you know, how many episodes have you done so far, and then what have you learned a lot about, you know, doing this and, and as long as you've been doing it? I had to look up on my website that <laughs> I have 115 episodes, which is not a true number because the B side, which is kind of a more laid back part that I did, um, with the tattooed quilter, those didn't get numbered the same way. So I I mean, it's way over 115. I'm probably, I think, around 130, Um, which sounds crazy. I remember watching the Pat Pat from Smart Passive Income. um, When I was watching the videos of how to start my own podcast, he said, you know, number your podcast with a zero, um, like zero, zero, one, because one day you're going to be in the hundreds and you want to leave room. And I thought, I can't believe I would ever be in the hundreds. And then I'm like, I'm in the hundreds, so um, so it's that, and it's a mixture. Some of them are just me. Some of them are true chats with other people, and some of them are just laid-back chats like Susie from Susie Quilts and I just had a conversation about our breakdown from Quilt Market and what we thought about it, what we took away from it. Um, what was your other – what did I learn? What have I learned? Yeah, yeah. How's it transitioned? Like, when you first got started, you know, what have you learned while you've been podcasting and, and interviewing so many people? I think I've had – one of the things that I've learned that was a mistake is um, – I mean, being a stay-at-home mom is not easy. So if the kids got sick and I had to cancel something and then not following back up with that because, you know, life got crazy and in the way or, you know, they didn't stay up and and come back to me or um, that has been a really, really hard lesson for me. I actually had one person that I I had to reschedule a couple times and then they said, you know, I just don't want to do it. It's too, too, this is just too much work. But I had to equal that out with my job was to be a mom. That was it. I wasn't making any money. So I had, you know, that was my full-time job. And so that has been a really hard lesson that I've had to learn that I'm not going to make everybody happy and I'm going to make mistakes. But picking back up and going forward has been the best thing that I could do. I hate that I have that negative Um, impression on somebody, but I try and change it. If I can't change it, then I have to move forward. Um, Some of the positive things that I've learned, I have really learned that I have a voice and (laughs) actually I have a distinctive voice. I've learned that, that many times I'm in a crowd of people and they walk by and they turn around and go, Stephanie, I listen to you. I know that voice. That is very odd for me. I have always not liked my voice. Um, I remember when I was in elementary school or middle school and my parents used to move around for their job. And I remember being in Colorado and, and getting picked on for this Southern voice. And I think that scarred me a little bit. Um, but that is one thing I've noticed. And I will say I have learned how to have a conversation with pretty much anyone, I can talk to you in the grocery store about how the weather is. I can
can talk to you on the podcast about how sewing is. I can talk to you about business. I feel like my passion for having a conversation is so different now than it was in the end. Does that make sense? Oh, completely. Yeah. Yeah. You want to connect. It's like, connect yeah. with me. Come on, connect with me. Yeah, no, I completely, yes, yes, I, yes. I completely get that, you know, and, and, uh, and, uh, I understand also my, my kind of rule with podcasting when I have trouble connecting with someone is three strikes, you're out, you know, and that's three strikes for me and three strikes for that other person. And it's like, you know, three strikes, you know, I just can't connect with you. Maybe I'll give it, a, I will give it six months, you know, it's kind of yeah. the rule yeah. that I'm giving it. And, and so far that's worked out pretty well. Uh, it's not perfect and I don't want to hurt any feelings, but at the same time, you know, we're busy people, you know, whether it's yeah. taking care of our kids or, you know, you know, getting work done or whatever, uh, you know, it's, it's time on both sides, you know, it's the person that you're interviewing yeah. and it's you too. So, um, what's the most exciting conversation you've had so far with, with chatting with all of these quilters and sewists? Gosh, you know, I mean, I think my favorite conversations um, have been the ones where people really open up and surprise me when I ask them a question. I mean, a lot of people are not used to talking about themselves. Um, I do get that. I feel like a lot of us spend a lot of time, you know, in our sewing area with our families and not not that all of us are introverts, but I feel like we really love that quiet time of sewing. Um, it's almost like our Zen moment. So to talk about that is sometimes hard. The favorite conversations are always the ones that, you know, when they just come out of, out of the gate with um, their story. And that is why I do the podcast. I love stories. I love learning other people's you know, life story, why they came to sewing. And, um, Melanie Miller was just on a podcast. Um, that, that was, I mean, I was excited to have Melody Miller, of course, from Cotton and Steel on my podcast, but when she opened up and said some of those really personal and private things, that to me was just like, I loved it. It was, it was a snippet into some of the things that you would never hear about her because, I mean, that's just not something you put on your blog, you know what I mean? But in a conversation, it's totally natural and normal. And I think it really helps other people to see we're all human. We're all human. So when people open up on the podcast, I feel like it totally normalizes a lot of the listeners' lives, you know, and makes them connect a lot more to that person yeah absolutely absolutely you know and that that's the thing I think a lot of people are more comfortable saying something than they are writing it um I yeah. <laughs> if you read my about me page <laughs> I just went ahead and let it all hang it out you know I'm just going ahead and put it all out there but you know it's one of those things I think everybody has to kind of go with their own comfort zone so that's really cool. And uh, has anything surprised you as you've done podcasts? You know, like, you know, just the process of, of becoming an interviewer really surprised me. You know, I've made videos and stuff and I, you know, I've done tutorials and it surprised me that being an interviewer, the person asking the questions was a totally different skill set. Did that surprise you? Yeah, I think that part came so natural for me where... I mean, I, I guess I'm just a naturally curious person. I mean, I guess I didn't put in the part of why I started the podcast was, you know, I picked up these fabrics and I, and I had a sewing machine and, um, and I thought, but what is the story behind this? Like, why did this person decide to put all these images in the computer and make fabric? Wait, but how did, how do fabric manufacturers even make fabric like how is that process how does somebody even get a fabric line and all of those questions were definitely in my head while I was creating and I thought I want to know that like that's somebody's story that's a business's story and I want to know those things that I'm hearing on all these other podcasts you know my the ones that have to do with business or cooking or um whatever, always had somebody telling their story, but I felt like that was missing a little bit in our industry for podcasts. And I knew that I was fearless enough to ask some of those questions. Um, 
that that to me, I, I really love that part. I love that. But the surprising part is the amount of people that have really successful businesses that have a really hard time talking about their business. You know what I mean? Like really talking about that passionate thing that they do every day. They do it for a reason. But I think some people have a really hard time talking about that reason. And I want to relax them enough that they get it all out. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, sometimes that can just be like talking about business and some people are a little yeah. uncomfortable about that. You know, like, hey, if you're in business, you're making money. You're usually yeah. in it to make money. And that's not that's not a crime. That's OK. It's yeah. OK to make money, uh, especially doing something that you love. Uh, I think yeah. that's really, really rewarding. And, you know, speaking of that, what is your goal with your podcast? Are you are you building a business and and how are you going about that? I think for a lot of podcasters, we love the idea of chatting with other people and telling stories and getting information out there. I think the hard part once you get into it is knowing that podcasting started out being free, so it's never going to be accepted to charge. Um, you know, and I, and I, in the sewing industry, feel like so many things in the sewing industry are free, free tutorials, free this, free that. Content is out there, and it's really hard um, when you charge for things. Podcasting it's one of those things, even advertisement in this industry is really hard for the podcast because it's such a new form of media that, and, and, and going back to those stats, you know, I mean, how do you tell someone when you really don't know yourself what those stats mean? Because I mean, they're so generic. Um, so my goal, I know my, like, I, I really did want my podcast to be the money maker. But then I really decided it's not going to happen that way, but I feel like my podcast is always going to be a part of my business. I'm changing my focus right now and having the money part come from somewhere else and have the podcast still be my free element. Um, that's been a long three road, three year road. I mean, I didn't just come to that, you know, in the last day. I'm realizing that I love the podcast. I don't want it to go anywhere. I don't want to have to charge people. So the future for modern society, I think, will be um, using the podcast in where I share those chats with you. Maybe not so much personal information in the intro. Using my newsletter to share those things that are happening in my week as they come. And then using my website to build content. Um, and Instagram will kind of feed all three of those. That has been a lot of thought on my on my end. What do my listeners and my followers want from me? And how can I deliver that in a way that I feel like I'm doing it for free? Which is not working. <laughs> <laughs> that you're I mean, actually being supported doing this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and my and my listeners are amazing. I have t-shirts and I have pledge drives and I have an Amazon button on my, on my website. I mean, I get a revenue through all of those things. It's just not sustainable in a very consistent way. Um, so consistency is one thing that I have to work on. Um, Leah said in um, the interview for my podcast, she was like, I can't say consistency enough. And Angie from Gnome Angel is saying the same thing to me. And Krista from Krista Quilt says the same thing. So I think that I am having to, I'm learning as a business person who I want to be. And I feel like the last three years have really come together in the last month to say, this is why you've been doing it. Here's where you're headed and here's how you're going to do it. And I have a clear focus and I could not be happier. Good. That's so wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's really tough when you feel like you're kind of wandering around in the dark and kind of going like, I'm putting yeah. this out there and I'm putting this out there, but it's like, something's either not right or it's not connecting or maybe it's just not working for you or it just doesn't feel right. You know, it's very frustrating when you're at that stage and it's so nice 
when it all kind of clicks and comes together. And that's really, really good. And I, you know, I do think podcasts are difficult to monetize. I, I think that that's really tricky. Yeah. Um, one thing that I have picked up from a couple different podcasts that I left into, listen to is um, Patreon, uh, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Yeah. And it's a site where you could, you know, set up and, and say, like, you know, support me for like a dollar or two dollars a month. And, uh, you know, and that, wow. you, know, you know, people could, could just contribute that way. And then maybe to offer an extra podcast episode every month. Uh, or, you know, a little block pattern or something like that, um, that is in exchange for that support, you know, and there's a lot of makers, you know, I was just checking it out today. That's why I'm mentioning it. Uh, I was just checking it out today. And there are a lot of people there that are making excellent content, you know, amazing videos and amazing podcasts, and they're being supported for their work. Well, I think that, you know, my husband and I looked into that. I mean, we've pretty much looked into everything. A lot of his podcasts that he listens to use Patreon, and so we went and looked at it. Um, the fees are crazy. Really? I mean, you really have to make a lot of money for it to be worth it. Um, so we decided not to. I mean, the platform is awesome. The fees are crazy. So I love the platform. Like, I loved it, and I wanted to do it, but it just wasn't worth it for us. Um and, I mean, we really almost hit publish until my husband was like, you know, I mean, think about it. You would have to make this much money for it to even be worth it. So that's when I kind of switched and did the pledge drive with the PayPal, um, with the PayPal button, which I think worked really well. I have it on my website. And, you know, I, I kind of am coming to this realization that, I don't need to have everybody listen to my podcast. I need to have the people who want to listen, who want to support it, and want to read what I have to say. And those core people, that's who I want to serve. And I think the people that do the pledge drive and, you know, um, contribute to it, I think those are the people are who are that core audience. Um, you know, I still have fees taken out of that, but... I feel like it's serving those people are my core audience. And I, and when I get that in my pay power, they support me through the pledge driver and monthly donation. It makes me work that much harder. Whereas Patreon, I really felt like with all those fees taken out, it would have been more headache than it was worth. Um, I do think there's going to be a platform that will come out that will be what we need, not as many fees you know, more focused towards a creative podcast that hasn't happened yet, but I am waiting for that to happen. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I, I was just, you know, kind of glancing through it and that actually really surprises me. And it's kind of like, oh, okay. You know, like I'm now going to go like read the, read the fine print a little bit yeah. better this now. <laughs> now. And it's so funny, you know, uh, sometimes when you glance at something and kind of like fly through it or, you know, even someone just listening to a podcast uh, or reading a blog might think, you know, oh, that, you know, that's so simple or that seems so easy. And it's, there's so much work behind it. So many hours and hours of work. Uh, to put that out there. So um, I, I'm so glad to hear that you are being, um, you are being paid back in some way. And I, and I hope oh, yeah. that that continues to improve and increase. Tell me what you're looking forward to. Like, where do you want to go with this and grow in the next five years and what you're most excited about? You know, my vision is changing more than um, I, I guess I expected. In the last month, things have just become really clear. I started this podcast from my new house. It was, you know, my dream. It was our dream location. I mean, um, and I, and I was so excited about all the different projects and things like that. I kind of want to get back to that. Um, I love to quilt. That's something that I always love to do, but I also like to make garments. I also like to make things for my house. Um, so I think I'm going to go back to that initial, really lifestyle-ish um, way that I approach my sewing and the podcast isn't going to go away. I mean, I think that those are discussions I want to have in my life for as long as I can. I love talking to other people, um, but I do wonder, and, and it's, it's funny, I do wonder if I will podcast in another way while I have this one, I love podcasting. 
Uh, I love talking to people. So I wonder if that's not, I wonder if the future doesn't hold a totally different podcast, maybe for a company that I love, um, maybe for, I I don't know. I don't know what that looks like, but I, I see that it keeps coming up when I, when I pray about it and when I really, you know, ask my inner self, what is the future? I wonder if that's not going to be in it. I don't know what that looks like, but, um, you know, doing that transition, I think the future of modern society is really thinking about my listeners and my readers and what they love from me and giving them more of that and what they don't want from me, you know, kind of cutting that part out. I'm up for that. I'm up for that challenge. I think the last three years have been really good for my soul. I think they've taught me a lot about myself, who I am, who I want to be, what I want to contribute to this world. And I'm really excited I'm really excited about what the future holds. I really think it's only going to get better and more focused around modern society, which is so exciting. Excellent. Wonderful. So let everybody know where they can find you online and where they can find your podcast. I am at modernsociety.com and I'm pretty much Modern Society on all of my platforms, on Pinterest, on Instagram, Facebook, Blog Lovin'. Um, I'm on I'm Modern Society on all of those, so you can come check me out. I post on Instagram a lot of things that um, are behind the scenes. I kind of like to share the real life of things, and also my sewing adventures. Um, The podcast is where you will hear me chat and with people in the industry, and the website right now doesn't have as much content as I want it to be, but that's going to change. I'm super excited about this change in my newsletter. You can sign up for that on modernsociety.com, and it's called The Stitch, and it is full of links that I have loved throughout the week, and I share those with you. I love my newsletter. Like, that is my new love is to share that information in your email every week with you. Excellent. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope everyone will go and check out Stephanie's podcast, modernsociety.com. So that's it for this episode. If you'd like to find more episodes of the Hello My Quilting Friends podcast, check it out at leahday.com slash podcast. We have a player that will play through all of the episodes shared so far so you can binge listen for hours on end. Until next time, let's go quilt.